I'm going to teach you these couple commands that you really need to know so that way you can chop samples with the best of them. What's up y'all, it's Holy, AKA Jordan. I'm gonna show you guys how to chop samples and how I flip this sample from YouTube into a crazy Jersey clip. I'll start off by deconstructing this Jersey beat that I made earlier that uses a sample in it. And then after we do that, I'm going to show you guys how to chop samples on time so you can pick any sample from the internet. So this will help you no matter what genre you make. Sampling can be done for probably any genre. So this information will definitely be useful for you even if you don't make Jersey club. All right, Let's get straight into it. Here's a preview of the track. I'm gonna play you a little bit of it and then I'll break down how I made it. And before I play it, I did sample a track from YouTube. The track is called Caught Me Running by Amalu. If you haven't heard that song, it's low key beautiful. Anyways, here's what the beat sounds like. That shit's crazy. It all started with the caught me running sample by Amalu. So I took the sample, chopped it up, sped it up. And uh, yeah, this is what it sounds like alone. And then I put on a little shaper box preset. It's just acting as a gate, just cutting the volume in and out to kind of keep that energy and enhance that rhythm. Layered the sample a little bit. And then we got this. <laughs> And it sounds super choppy right now, but you're just gonna have to get used to that. When you're chopping samples, sometimes it's not gonna sound perfect. Those rough edges will get smoothed out whenever you actually throw drums on it and add other melodies if you plan to do so or whatever the case is. So don't even worry if it doesn't sound perfect. But boom, after I chopped the sample and gave it a little layer, I wanted to add a piano. So that's what this contact is right here. And I used the Noir Pure Extra Body Preset. I added a bunch of effects, J37, Shaper Box, Fab filter, cleaverb. Without the effects, this is what it sounds like. Boom, after that, I added a cool little synth. Basically, same melody as the piano, just kind of simplified. Added a bunch of effects, so this is what it sounds like without the effects. And then we add the effects and I panned it to the right. And this is what it sounds like. We got EQ, soloing the highs, delays stacked on top of each other, different timings, sound shifter, soothe, to just kind of smooth out the sound a little bit. Add a little, a bit of reverb, shaper box, kind of helping create pockets of silence for our Jersey Club drums. And then we have some halftime, so that way it's not too chaotic. Then I found this cool drum fill from Splice. We added the classic 808, Jersey Club 808. Classic pattern. And this is what we have so far. And then we have this next section right here where we add a kick layered with the 808. Same exact pattern, so I'm not gonna play that. Just imagine a kick. And then we have this cool little lead. Low-key, one of my favorite parts of the track. And this is what it sounds like. It's a diva preset. This one's MK Joy. This is what the synth lead sounds like with no effects. This is a cool little call response type of melody. And then we threw halftime and some delays and reverb. Pretty similar effects, I'm not gonna lie. And yeah, other than that, I really just threw in a bunch of splice stuff like this little, Work. we gotta throw the whip crack in. So for this last section right here, we added a synth bass. I'll give you guys a preset because I use this preset 99% of the time that I use a synth bass because it has a dark sound to it. It can sound smooth. It basically does everything. Moog Taurus Super Sub, and it's in the Trillion Library, I believe. Threw a shaper box on here to get the rhythm going. 
thermal for distortion on the synth bass soothe just kind of to take out some low mids maybe to smooth those out just a tiny bit and then i don't oh the limiter is for the side chain because i threw the kick on top so this is what that sounds like <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to chop samples on time. So if you're Ableton user, you're probably cheesing hard as fuck right now. You just need to make sure that auto warp long samples is on. But if you're an FL user like me, <laughs> Let me throw in this random sample. Boom. So what I like to do is obviously it's probably not going to be labeled unless you got lucky or you look it up, but you could. This is editor Jordan from the future. My audio didn't record for this whole section when I'm trying to show you how to chop samples. So I'm just going to run through how to chop samples the best I can as fast as possible. So let's get straight into that. Like, look at this. You see all this blank audio? Come on. All right, boom. So I downloaded a random sample and of course the BPM or whatever is not labeled. You're just going to try to figure that out. To do that, I listen to it. So usually I'll listen to the sample outside of FL so I can tap the BPM in. So I'll play it in Edison and then I'll tap what I think it is. It has that da, 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 da. And I'm going to pitch this up super high. So hopefully I don't get copyrighted. You want to just get as close as possible to the original BPM. And then you're just basically going to fix all of the parts that they played slightly off time. You're going to nudge them on time. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Keep in mind when you add drums and when you add melodies and you add other things, all of it is going to mesh way better. I'm going to teach you these couple commands that you really need to know. So that way you can chop samples with the best of them. After you memorize these, you're going to be moving quick. There are three commands that I need you to know. First, we have the pencil tool. You're just going to use that to move the sample around. That's one out the way. All right. Second command we need is C. That's our cut tool. And then uh, there's little variations. You thought it was about to be sweet, but it's not. All right. Boom. We got C, the cut tool. So now I can just left click and drag to cut normally but you see how i missed on this first one i meant to cut where our line is but i cut a little bit to the left to prevent that hold shift down and then left click and you don't have to drag anywhere you can just click you can also drag if you want to be sure or make the line longer so if you had multiple samples such as this then you could make cuts to all of them shift the left click drag all the way down past them boom you just cut all of them so when you hold shift all of that is doing is locking your cursor to these bars in the grid do you see how it's instantly moving to the next line on this grid that's all it's doing i use shift a lot the final version of the cut tool that we're going to be using we're going to be holding alt while we make cuts and this does the opposite of shift it makes it to where you have free reign you can cut in between the bars with ease where ever you want as small and as precise as you possibly want it to be you can do that while pressing alt so we have alt for precision based cuts in between lines not on grid shift to cut on grid and then you have the regular left click so once you got all of that i hope you wrote it down or, or you might have to come back to this part of the video but there is one final shortcut that i need to show you the s key if you press s it'll select the slip key and what that is going to do is it's going to move the sample without actually moving the chop you made so how we're going to be using and incorporating all of these shortcuts i'm about to show you right now so we tapped the bpm that we think this is closest to so that way i can visually try to line up these spikes in volume with lines on the grid that's usually how we know that it's on time usually not always but most of the time you can eye it down <laughs> So I'm also listening for the snare. If there's any drums in the sample, that'll help you tell what part is what part. You're going to look for any sounds in the sample that you can try to imagine where they're going to be, like snares. Anything like that is going to have a consistent rhythm. It's just going to be slightly off time. You just got to eyeball the sample and putting stuff on time. So I'm going to press C, cut here, press S, Alt, left click drag it on time now that you know the steps and you know the shortcuts i'm just going to pick a part of this sample and show you guys how i chop things and just narrate how i'm doing it all right so this could be cool and this might be a really hard sample to chop but i don't care we're gonna make it work and a huge tip for making all of your cuts sound natural and smooth double click the sample boom go to this de-clicking mode and go to smooth and you see how it just made this little transition i want to say where it's like a smooth fade in it's gonna do that for everywhere that you cut and that's gonna help you a lot. So now I know it sounds like a lot and it looks like a lot, but watch how simple it is. Listen to it and I'm gonna turn up, I'm gonna change my metronome sound so you can really hear it. Oh, my name. Oh, my name.
that. All right, so boom, I can hear this part is a little bit off time. I'm gonna press C, hold Alt, left click drag, cut right before it. Boom, press S, and then hold Alt, and scoot this section up a little bit, and listen to it. Depending on how lucky you are and how good you are at guessing the BPM, chopping this will be easy or difficult. The further off you are from the original BPM, the harder it's gonna be, and more small chops you're gonna have to make to make it fit on time. So now we have this part, which is already on time. I wanna skip. So I need to scoot this back just a tiny bit or scoot up. This part's also slightly off time. And I'm gonna cut right before here. It's not terribly off time, but it's a little bit off time. Sometimes you're gonna have to uh, go to the pencil tool, like I said, to move it. And you're gonna have to move one part above it and drag it so that way it maybe fades in smoother. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna have to mess around with that sometimes. You can also hold alt while you're dragging the end of the samples to get free range instead of snapping it to grid. So same thing, boom, cut in front, drag it forward a little bit, boom. Do the same thing. We have this part right here. Obviously you would probably chop more than this section, but just demonstrating how to do it, I think you can basically get the point. You're gonna get the section that you want chopped, whether it's four bars, eight bars, 48 bars, it doesn't matter. You're just gonna select it by right clicking and dragging at the top area until the very end of the section that you want. Then I'm gonna go to the master, arm the master by left clicking this gray button and making it red. And then you're gonna press Alt and R together and make sure song is selected when you do that or it's gonna render it out as the pattern and you're not gonna get any audio. So make sure you switch this to song and song is highlighted and then you arm the master and alt R. Now you rendered that out, it should be under your waveform section up at this top area under all your tools. Boom, untitled, it's gonna be the newest one since we just made it. And then I'm gonna stretch it to the original length. And then there's a lot of cool things that you can do from here. You've done the hard part, now you do the fun part. Now there's two ways that I know that you can do this. You can go to this top left area right here where this waveform is in this top left corner right here and left click. And then you can go to chop and then you can go to time based and chop in beats or bars chop it however you want to do if you want to do beats bars whatever you can there, yeah, however you want to do it and then you can just select your pencil tool p and then you can move them around and kind of chop however you want clone them make stuff repeat change the order whatever you want to do yeah, it sounds like garbage, but you can basically, it'll sound good with the sample that you like that you choose a part that you actually want to sample. And if you don't want to do it that way, you can go in your channel rack and you can open up a plugin called Slice X. And I know it looks a little complicated, but bear with me. I'm going to show you just what you need to know. All right, boom. So you're going to go to your sample that you rendered out. So this untitled thing right here, boom. So you're just going to drag this. So I'm going to left click drag and throw it on my channel rack. You can hover over this button while you're dragging it and it'll pop it up. Boom, so I dragged it in there. Now all you gotta do is auto slice, medium grid slicer. You can mess around with this pitch knob and then you can just start playing stuff on your MIDI keyboard. I would also turn off the auto dump. But yeah, once you do that, you can just start making chops on your MIDI keyboard or even on your actual keyboard on your desk by doing control T. You could do this if you're on a laptop as well. The sample will start on the C note. And yeah, that's just about everything that you need to know. Let me know if you guys found this video helpful. If you did, all I ask is make sure you hit that subscribe button. That's all I'm asking. Because 60% of you aren't subscribed. I don't understand. Oh, and while you're down there hitting the subscribe button, make sure you go get that free kit that I put in the description for you. Also, make sure you join my new Discord down below. Check out my Patreon if you're serious about learning how to produce. And make sure you go check out how I got this bad boy. My first plaque ever. I'm going to link a video down below of me opening this and, and telling you how this record came about i'm streaming tonight on kick make sure you check that out i'll catch you guys in the next video